Hey, what's up, Zach here. And if there is one question I get asked more than any as a foot doctor that runs a sneaker review channel, it is what size shoe should I buy? Now, of course, I can't reach through the camera and physically examine your foot to tell you 100% what size shoe you should wear. I can teach you how to more reproducibly and accurately measure your foot size, and more importantly, measure your foot shape, because no matter if you're playing basketball, tennis, pickleball, volleyball, badminton, whatever kind of court sport you're searching for a shoe for on this channel, there is a way to find nearly your exact size and shape of shoe, no matter what brand or model of shoe you're buying. So let's get into it. All right, so your first step is finding a product called a Baranic device. Now you can order these online, they're pretty cheap, or you can just go to any shoe store. It doesn't have to be an athletic shoe store, it doesn't have to sell basketball, tennis, or any kind of court shoe. As long as it's a Baranic device like this, you can use it. And of course, for European and other sizing, they do make the Baranic device for that. However, if you don't have access to it, easiest way is just take a measuring tape, measure heel to toe, and then measure the width of the ball of your foot. Take those numbers and you can move on to the next steps of this process. Now the first thing you want to do with the Brannock device is measure your right and left foot because most people's feet are different sizes. There are actually very few people out there with identical right and left feet. For example, my left foot is a little bit longer and just a tad bit wider along my fifth metatarsal head. And the nice thing about the Brannock device is, is you can measure length as well as width. Just make sure this width right here goes right up to the ball of your foot, right to that big toe joint because that's the widest part of your foot. Now most people that are trying to sell you shoes will tell you this is as far as you need to go. However, this is just the beginning and finding your actual foot size. So once you find your size on the Brannock device, at least in my experience, if you're gonna play in a court shoe, that's basketball, tennis, pickleball, volleyball, anything on a court, you probably should be adding at least a half size to that. In my case, since I'm a very wide foot, I actually add a full size. If you look at my foot on a Brannock device, it's a 10 and a half 2E. I wear an 11 and a half in a court shoe. And to be quite honest, if you tried to fit my foot into a 10 and a half, pretty much anything besides sandal, it's gonna be squished in there like a sausage. And that's because the Brannock device was invented in a time when shoes were made to be much more form-fitting, much tighter on the person's foot, and they were more designed for more leather shoes, kind of the dressier shoes. They weren't designed for shoes that needed more expansion when you're sweating and when you're pounding on them like a court shoe. And the way you tell if you should go up a half or a full size usually depends on your foot shape, which we'll get to in a minute. So now that we've partly found our foot size, it's time to find our foot shape. And for that, you're gonna need cardboard. And for this step, make sure you have a sock on, it's just a lot easier. Get a marker and just trace the shape of your foot. Now, if your right and left foot are pretty similar in shape, you can just use one and kind of flip it for the left versus right. However, if one is much wider, much more turned in or out than the other, just do a different tracing for each side. Next thing you wanna do, just cut it out. I felt like these are the only scissors I could find laying around in the house. And I cut shoes open on a 10 channel. And now that we have our tracing, make note of the places where shoes usually bother you. Like in my case right here, I'll make an X. It's right along my fifth metatarsal head. This is where my foot is the widest because I have what's called a C-shaped foot. As you can see here, my foot is shaped like a C. So the next thing you wanna do is find the overall shape of your foot. I've actually made three of the most common, a flat foot, a neutral foot, and an in-flare foot. So here's mine, as you can see, I kind of already drew it, but I'll do it again. This is more of a C-shaped foot. This is my wife's foot here. This is more of a neutral foot. As you can see, it's pretty straight and a flat foot which kind of goes off to the side. And as you can see, each one of these foot types is going to hit the shoe in different ways. As you can see, my foot type is going to hit right here, where this is my wife's foot right here. She might not really have a big issue in the foot because she's pretty straight, where some of the flat foot is going to have problems fitting in this area right here, as well as over here along the outside of their foot. And in terms of court shoes, there are really only two types of shapes, or what we call lasts. One is a slightly inflared last, where there's just a slight bend toward the inside, and then straight, which is where the heel and the forefoot are pretty much straight. There's no angle between them. And when you take something like my foot, which is wide and inflared, when you put it on top of here on the Stycon, as you can see, even at the widest part of my foot, I'm still well encased within the shoe. The shoe is still accommodating me at my widest, where on the Vapor Cage 4, at the widest point of my foot, Look how far outside the shoe I'm coming. So you can see here where this shoe is just never gonna be compatible with me. Whereas someone like my wife, even though her foot's a lot smaller than this shoe, you can still see the overall shape of her foot actually fits the Vapor Cage 4 pretty well. So she would be a good match for this shoe. Now, if you're doing this in person, it's pretty easy. You just put them up against each other and see if the shape matches. However, if you're buying online like most people are, what you wanna do is just to take a picture of the tracing with your phone and then put some paper over top of it. Just gotta make sure the image stays on there. 
and then just trace it out. And that way you have a cell phone size image of your foot that you can literally just put up against the shoe on your phone or on your computer for ease of use. But after a few times of looking at the tracing of your foot, you can kind of start to figure out what shape your foot is and if your foot's going to be compatible with that shoe just by looking at the sole. Now I know I told you that you were just getting started with the sizing with the Brannock device. You have to take into account the shape. So if your foot is really kicked in like my foot is with the C-shaped and it's really wide, that's typically when I go up one size from the Brannock device. If you have a pretty straight foot, if this X isn't really making an X, it's kind of one continuous line, it usually means you can just go up that half size from the Brannock device. However, if you're kicked in or kicked out, depending on which side you are, usually that shape of your foot, because it's curling in, it's artificially making your foot look shorter and that's why you have to go up a little bit more in size. And this is where finding an accurate review of the shoe you want to buy is really important because if the shoe runs big, then you're gonna to wanna to go that half size down from your court shoe baseline, not your Brannock baseline. Conversely, if the shoe runs small, you're gonna to wanna to go a half size up from your court shoe baseline. And remember, I usually don't recommend people going up or down more than one half size because when you start getting up or down a full size, there's just too much material in the shoe, the shoe becomes too floppy, and your game actually suffers from it. And that brings me to my biggest point. Make sure you are measuring the foot to your shoe, not the other way around. What that means is some people try to buy shoes that just aren't compatible with their feet because they like the way they look, or they see a professional that they like wearing them. It, sometimes it just doesn't work out. There are some shoes that are going to be compatible with your foot, and there are some shoes, no matter how high or low in a size you go, they're just not gonna fit. And the final consideration here is orthotics. Now, if you're using a full-length orthotic, which I usually recommend, you just take the insole out of your shoe and put that one in. Typically, they don't take up all that much room, no more than that half size that you would go up or down regardless. But if you are going into a shoe that's just a tad big on you, putting an insert in that shoe can help fill that little bit of a void that that bigger shoe is creating. And speaking of orthotics, if you wanna see my favorite for court shoes, make sure you click into this video up above and subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next video.